Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'm gonna to be doing a first impressions of the Tier L1 Lifter. I'm also gonna take this model and compare it to some of my other favorite pairs of weightlifting shoes regarding its toe box width and construction. So I have been training in this model over the last few weeks and in every single video I've shared on my Instagram page with this shoe, folks have asked, how is the tier model? How is the toe box? What shoe is that? So I wanted to put together this quick first impressions video to kind of give you an idea of what to expect with this model and to kind of highlight some of the features in it. And then I'll have a full review that rolls out in the next few weeks. So definitely stick around for that if you're interested. But Tier sent this model out for testing. I also invested in the black and green colorway on presale. Number one, to support Tier. Number two, having money in the game makes me way more objective with review content. And then number three, I just don't like all white colorways, to be quite honest. I like darker colorways. So whenever these roll out, if you're a size 10 and if you're interested in the all white colorway, definitely hit me up because I will send these to you. I don't mind. I would like the darker colorway. I don't know when they are formally coming out yet though. I have reached out to Tier. They haven't given me a direct date yet. When I do have a date, I'll definitely make that known on the channel. But a few thoughts that I have on this model from the start is number one, when it comes to the midfoot construction here, we have a dual strap system. I like it personally. Overall, these straps give you a nice lockdown feeling. However, what I have noticed is that with this bottom strap, there have been occasions where I've wanted to pull it a little bit tighter. And what ends up happening is when you pull this tight, it does get pretty close to the ground over here. Now, it does not hang over as much as the ROM 2s did when you really crank that bottom strap over, but it is pretty close. And so that is something that I think is really interesting with the shoe is because I think the main claim to fame with this model is its toe box width. And so if you have narrower feet, I actually am not sure that this shoe is gonna be the best pick for you because with the wide toe box, and I'll talk about this in a minute, it wasn't my favorite for weightlifting. And that was when I was wearing super thin no-show socks. I found that I was sliding around a little bit in this toe box because of the width. And when I was cranking this fully tight, I was having the strap get awfully close to the ground over here, way more than I would prefer. So for narrow width feet, I would say tread lightly with this model. The toe box width is great for allowing full toe splay, but I actually think the last might be a little bit wide for your foot anatomy. And that brings me into my next first impression. So the width of this model. There is no faulting that this is the widest toe box in the game when it comes to weightlifting shoes. Honestly, like low key, it does look like a little bit clowny like some of the barefoot shoes can if you look at it from the top down. Plus with this like pretty aggressive thick toe bumper, it is a pretty chonky toe box up here. But when it comes to width, if you have wider feet or if you constantly feel constrained in your normal weightlifting shoes, honestly, I think you're really going to vibe with this model. Narrow feet, again, may not resonate with it, but for neutral width feet that err on the side of being wider or for wide feet, you should have plenty of width in this toe box. And then also just for context, like I have a neutral width foot, so nothing crazy wide by any means. And so when it comes to the heel to toe drop in this model, this model has a 21 millimeter drop. That comes out to about 0.83 inches. That is similar to the drop that you're gonna get in the Reebok Legacy Lifter 2. So if you have been training in the Legacy Lifter 2, I think you'll enjoy the drop and effective heel height of this model because it will feel pretty similar. And then when it comes to the overall maneuverability of the toe box, it has broken in a little bit more, but when you first put these on, they are a little bit stiff. We have this TPU wedge that goes from the base of the forefoot back here into the heel. So stability of the heel isn't gonna be an issue. And the toe box does eventually break in to be a little bit more maneuverable. Now, if you do like way more maneuverability in your weightlifting shoes, this may not be the best model because this wedge does come up pretty far and the rubber sole is a little bit thick. So this may not be the best shoe for giving you the most articulation in the toe box, but overall, I never really found it too limiting for my lifting sessions. Now, when it comes to the performance of this shoe, my favorite thing to do in this model to date is squats because I'm static, because I'm really trying to grip the floor under me and just allow my feet to do their things. I like the overall width of the shoe. Where I actually kind of haven't liked this model, and I mentioned this earlier, is with stuff that's a bit more dynamic, I found myself sliding a little bit in this toe box and I really had to crank those straps tight to create a nice security in the shoe. Now, if you have narrow feet and if you want the shoe for accessories or for weightlifting where you're gonna be having a lot of foot turnover, that would be something to think about with the shoe because if you have to crank these super tight on your foot, that can not only one, get a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you have higher arches, but then number two, I worry that pulling the strap super tight over time, you're not gonna have a ton of surface area with this Velcro and this might actually start to bother you if it gets close to the ground. So just something to think about with this model. And then regarding grip and stability, the outsole in this shoe does a pretty good job of giving you a nice grip on wooden platforms and rubber gym floors. So the rubber sole on this model and its overall tread is pretty dang good as well. Now, when it comes to other weightlifting shoes, let's take a look at how this model's toe box compares to them. 
All right, so to give you an idea of the last construction and the width of the tier L1 lifter, I pulled four other weightlifting shoes and I actually have two barefoot shoes sitting over there just to give you an idea of the shoes overall width and construction. So we have the Reebok Lifter PR2 here, the Innovate Fast Lift Power G380, the Adidas Addy Power, and the Nike ROM4. I also have the Zero Shoes Prio here and the Vivo Barefoot Primus Lite 3. Now, please note this section is not me saying, oh, you need to wear a wide toe box or you're going to suck at lifting. Like, that's not how I roll. I think fit is very prevalent. Differential. It's going to really come down to your anatomical wants and needs and honestly wide toe boxes are not going to resonate with everyone So I think putting us into one box of like you have to wear this style of shoe is very silly But that being said I did want to give you an idea of what this shoe is going to be like regarding its fit So let's go ahead and compare all the toe boxes of our weightlifting shoes here All right, so let's go over some of the toe box differences between the weightlifting shoes here so Looking at something like the tier and the Addy Power, it's pretty easy to see the width of the tier compared to the Addy Power. Here in the Addy Power, we have a much more aggressive taper, despite having a similar level of upper volume here through the toe box. Looking at the ROM4, where you can see the difference is right here at the base of the pinky toe, it tapers a lot more. Also, we do have a lower volume here on the lateral base of the forefoot in the ROM4. Looking at the Innovate Fast Lift Power G380, this doesn't have as much of an aggressive taper. Also, it does have some nice volume in the upper. That's why I also really like the fit of this model. I have a neutral with foot and this model fits my foot pretty well. Could be a tiny bit wider, but it is starting to get a little bit closer to the tier, but the tier you can still see has this like wider base throughout pretty much to the end of the toe box. There just isn't as much of an aggressive taper here. And that's the patent pending toe box construction that tier has on this model. Looking at the Reebok Lifter PR2, less of an aggressive taper, but still you can see a pretty big difference here between these models toe boxes. So now if we pulled in barefoot shoes, how does the tier model compare? So when it comes to the width of like the Prio versus the tier, I would say that they're actually pretty similar almost through the base of the forefoot. Now the Prio does have less of a taper, so you do get more width in this model, but obviously this is a barefoot shoe, so very different construction and intent. And then looking at the Primus Light 3, I would say this is probably the most similar toe box construction. The Primus Light 3 is a tiny bit more wide, but the tier has a bit more upper volume. So just to give you an idea of the width of the toe box, this model definitely has the widest toe box in the game when it comes to weightlifting shoes. However, once again, its fit is gonna be very contextual on what you want and need. All right guys, that was my first impressions of the tier L1 lifter and how this model's sizing compares to other weightlifting shoes and even barefoot shoes regarding its width and fit. Overall, I have enjoyed the performance of the shoe so far. However, there are certain training contexts and foot anatomies where I think this model might fall short. And I'll discuss those more in depth in my full review, so definitely stick around for that. Hopefully this video was able to land in a direction that answered some questions you might have had on this model or at least shed some more light into the shoe because it's taken me way too long to film this video. I'm gonna be quite honest with y'all. But if you have additional questions on this shoe, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.